This lesson deals with second order Bodhi platforms. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 24. Previously in the course, we had six forms, and we used that to sketch the magnitude and angle of various transfer functions. These mostly dealt with real poles and real zeros. There's one last possibility, that's having a pair of complex conjugate poles and zeros. To find form seven in the following way is one minus the quantity omega over omega naught squared plus j omega over omega naught divided by q naught, where omega naught and q naught are constants. Let's sketch the magnitude of this. So it's 20 log base 10 of the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Now we have two variables, omega naught and q naught. So let me pick specific values of q naught and then let's see what happens as a function of omega and omega naught. When omega equals omega naught, this quantity is equal to one minus one squared. So this term drops out and omega equals omega naught. So this becomes a ratio of one. And so I have the square root of one over q naught squared. For all values of omega equal to omega naught, we have 20 log base 10 of one over q naught. When q naught is 10, that's gonna be minus 20 dB. When q naught is one, that's gonna be equal to zero. And when q naught is equal to one tenth, that'll be 20 dB. I've marked that with red dots on this graph versus frequency. Now, if I let omega equal 10 omega naught, plug it in this equation with a value of q naught equal to one, I get 39.96 dB. If I do it when q naught is 10, I get 39.91. And when I do it when q naught is equal to 1 tenth, I get 42.97. You can see here I'm tending towards 40 dB. What's happening? Well, this term here is very large. So if omega equals 10 omega naught, this becomes 10 squared, much bigger than one. And then we're gonna square it again. And then the term over here only has omega over omega naught squared. So this is much, much larger. So it's gonna dominate the results. So then we take the square root, it'll cancel this, and we're getting a ratio then of 10 squared. So we're approaching then 20 log of 100, which is 40 dB. So as we depart from omega naught, all three cases approach an asymptote of now 40 dB per decade, similar to our form four, but double the value. Go the other way, when omega is less than omega naught, Q naught is equal to 10, I get minus 0.08, minus 0.0432, and then plus 0.04235. These are all approaching zero dB. So when omega over omega naught is a small number, and then squaring it is much smaller, so the one becomes important. Likewise here, there's a ratio that's less than one, and depending on the value of Q naught, this can be also a small number. So really approaching the square root of one, which would be one, and 20 log of one is zero. We're seeing that as we graph the points here, this is my dotted line, is that we're approaching zero dB per decade. So very much like a form four, but everything's double. So all I need to do to make a sketch is to find omega naught. We need to factor our equation to look like form seven, find omega naught, we're gonna increase at 40 dB per decade, or 12 dB per octave, above omega naught, and then for below that, zero dB per decade or zero dB per octave. So again, a real quick sketch approximating the actual curve. Now, depending on the value of Q naught, we're either gonna be touching the asymptotes, that's when Q naught is equal to one, below it when Q naught is 10, above it when Q naught is equal to one tenth. But the value of Q naught affects the actual curve, not the asymptotes. What about the phase angle? The angle of F7 is the arc tangent of the imaginary over the real which is omega over omega naught q naught for the imaginary part, and for the real one minus the quantity omega over omega naught squared. Let's again take three values of q naught, say low, medium, and high, and then see what happens with the ratio of omega to omega naught. When omega equals omega naught, the denominator is equal to one minus one squared. So no matter what the values of q naught, we're approaching infinity. The arc tangent of infinity is 90 degrees. So each three of the cases here, we pass through a single point at 90 degrees when omega equals omega naught. Plug in omega equals 10 omega naught. This expression is equal to 179.42. In this case, it's 174.23 and then 134.7. We're tending towards 180 degrees. Now, why is that happening? When omega equals 10 omega naught, I have a very large negative number. I have a positive number for the imaginary part. So I'm in the second quadrant, very close to the negative real axis. And so that's gonna be 180 degrees. Go the other way. When omega over omega naught is small, this arc tangent is equal to 0.579 for a Q naught of 10. It's equal to 5.768 for a Q naught of one and 45.29 for a Q naught equal to one tenth. So it's tending towards zero degrees. So why is that happening? When omega over omega naught is a small number, then you can throw this away. That makes the numerator small, depending on the value of Q naught. We have an imaginary part that's small and a real part that's roughly equal to one. So we're in the first quadrant, very close to the x-axis. So our angle's approaching zero degrees. So you could approximate this behavior with three straight line segments. Below one tenth omega naught, we're approaching zero degrees, higher we're approaching 180 degrees, and if you connect these two up, we'd be changing at 90 degrees per decade. So it's exactly the same as a form four, but everything is double. So again, all you need to know is what is omega naught, and then just go back a decade, zero degrees per decade, go forward a decade, zero degrees per decade, and then connect those up with a 90 degree per decade slope.
And lastly, form 8 would be the reciprocal of form 7. So 1 over the quantity 1 minus omega omega naught squared plus j omega over omega naught q naught. As we showed earlier in the chapter, when you take the reciprocal, you simply take the mirror image of what you had previously. So our form 7, we would find omega naught, 0 dB, and then we were increasing above omega naught, but now we're going to be decreasing at a slope of minus 40 dB per decade or minus 12 dB per octave. Depending on the value of q naught, if it's greater than 1, equal to 1, less than 1, will be above the asymptotes, hugging the asymptotes, and below the asymptotes at omega naught. But as frequency increases, we'll all approach minus 40 dB per decade. As the frequency decreases, we'll all approach 0 degrees per decade. Same thing for the phase angle. At omega naught, we're now going to drop 90 degrees, go back one decade, 0 degrees, go forward one decade, a minus 180. Connecting these two up, I have a slope now of minus 90 degrees per decade. So again, all you need to know is what is omega naught to construct the asymptotes for the magnitude and for the angle. The actual curve will hug the asymptotes for high and low frequencies, but at omega equals omega naught, depending on the value of q naught, will either be above the asymptotes, touching the asymptotes, or below it. And similarly for the angle. All cases pass through minus 90 degrees, but we get a more abrupt change as frequency changes when the q is high. That's kind of dragged out when the q is low. And when q naught is equal to 1, I pretty much hug the asymptotes for not only high and low frequencies, but also in between. Adding these two last forms now, we can do any transfer function in sketching magnitude and angle versus frequency.